And it looks as live preparing and meeting is now live streaming on YouTube. All right, awesome. And you should all have received the pop up in the middle of the meeting as well. I'm going to pull up my YouTube in another window. I've got like one of those dual monitor things. And as soon as I do so, it'll start playing. So I've got to mute it. So give me just a second to do that. And then we will get started. Okay, the mute is already on. All right, perfect. Good morning and welcome. This is our fourth Friday. I had to think about this today. I got up. I'm like, what Friday are we on? Fourth Friday of the month. Um, the good thing is some months when there's five Fridays, there's not a call. So next Friday, I get the morning off, which will be, um, I don't even know what I'll do with myself then. I used to do these calls every Friday specifically focused on VIP office hours for job seekers. And we'd been doing these for about, gosh, through the pandemic, so about three years. And I've been bringing in um, folks to help out. I call them my all-stars, people like Sue Griffey to help out with facilitating questions and whatnot. Um, but what I found is that over time, our we we had some good weeks in terms of participation and then some weeks where we didn't have as many people coming in. And as you all know, the job seeker market, it's a continual revolving door. There's always people that are losing jobs, being laid off, let go. Um, so I liked having that, but I also wanted to tie it back to my business because I, I came through that revolving door and became self-employed and I've got to stay um, successful in my business in order to not go back through the revolving door back into corporate again. <laughs> So for me, it was a little bit of like, how can I tie these things back into my business? Um, I do have some offerings for job seekers, but typically the the free Friday calls are of where a lot of people just come around and hang out. And that's great. And that's my way of giving back. But I, I want to make sure I'm giving back, but also thinking of myself, it's like the airline mask scenario. If you can't breathe, no one else is going to breathe either. So I decided to kind of pivot and keep the Friday office hours going, but every week of the month, we have a different topic, and this is the fourth week. So we are here focusing on social media and marketing in general. So there's not one specific audience necessarily. Sometimes we have people that are social media managers, people that are self-employed doing their own social media, people who work as a part of a marketing department or looking to get some marketing tips coming on. Um, what I will say is if you're a job seeker and you come on the call, I'll redirect you and I'll I'll say, you know, Friday, October 6th is our next phone call. But today on Friday, September 22nd, we're going to be focusing on social media and marketing. So I'll keep us on topic. Now with a smaller group, we do get the benefit of uh, allowing everyone to introduce themselves. So I love the smaller groups for that reason. As the group goes larger, we're not going to have this opportunity to introduce yourself. And by the way, if this does get converted to a podcast, we'll give you uh, we'll be included in the podcast. So you'll be on a podcast and somebody can say, have you ever been on a podcast? You can say, yes, I have. So once that gets published, I will definitely let all of you know, this will be an optional element if you'd like to introduce yourself. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in the order in which I see your attendee names appearing in my panel. I'll call on each of you and I'll let you know who's on deck. Okay. So we're going to go first, Dana, if you'd like to introduce yourself and then on deck will be Sandra. So Dana, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Dana. I My background is in sales and marketing in the beauty industry. So I just wanted to attend and see what types of tips and tricks I could pick up. Awesome. And I didn't even tell you, and I should have done this before you came up, like, what should you say in your introduction? So mm -hmm. normally, depending on the call, I'll say, um, if you're a job seeker, tell us your targeted job title and geographic area. If you are, if it's a company page call, I'll ask you, you know, do you have a company page yet on LinkedIn? I guess for this call, I would love to hear what's your affiliation or interest in social media or marketing. And it sounds like this is just something you're doing for yourself, for your business. Is that fair to say, Dana? No, well, no, I, I'm, in, I'm in unemployed right now, but when, when okay. I have been working, um, I have been in the marketing, um, between marketing and, oh. and sales, I kind of go back and forth. So I just always like to learn and, and keep my skills, um, you know, updated. So I, I'm, I'm basically here for my future job. <laughs> and what, what is, what's the job that you're looking for? Cause you never know, maybe there'll be somebody on this call. Um, so I'm looking for either a senior brand manager or so, something in like marketing or like account management um, and preferably in the beauty industry. Okay. Um, Michelle J. Raymond, she's in Australia, but she came from the beauty industry before becoming a LinkedIn trainer and coach. I'm not sure if you're connected with her or not, but I know that she's worked with many uh, US-based clients, even though she's in Australia, I know that she has a lot of US-based connections. So try connecting with her. Mention that I send you over to her. Michelle J. Raymond is her name. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, Sandra, would you like to introduce yourself? I'll give you the opportunity if you'd like to unmute. If not, we'll move on. 
and camera on or camera off, whatever you're comfortable with. Oh, there you are. Hey, Sandra. <laughs> Good morning. Well, I am a, I'm in transition right now. And I was in a career in corporate as a director of sales and channel management, plus also managing the marketing and social media for the company that I worked for. And so I'm in transition right now and deciding where next to go with my career and just leaving myself wide open to any opportunity. And so recently I have been invited to partner with uh, a quantum physics scientist who has transitioned her career for decades of academic research into a holistic practice to manage her marketing and social media. So I am considering that opportunity. So basically what I would be doing is managing all of her marketing and social media content on all the channels that she already has developed. So looking at her messaging, revitalizing the messaging and targeting Tar doing a lot of targeted messaging to her audience. And that would be to generate sales for her programs that she offers. So that's where I'm at. I'm in the decision mode right now. Okay, good. All right. And I apologize. I got a little distracted. I got a text message. So I missed a bit <laughs> of that. Um, was that a question or were you just sharing that as an update? And I do apologize. I'm sharing that as an update. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I'll be watching the playback. I'm like, what did I just miss? I know Sandra. And then I was like, you don't want to get distracted. And you're like, oh, shoot, what just happened? But I always tell folks, um, I'm a very truthful, honest person. And I don't make mistakes. I have learning experiences. And my <laughs> learning experience was just this. I should, probably should have turned my phone over instead of reading my phone because my brain got like hardwired into here. But Sandra, I'm delighted to see you on the call. And we're here to help you throughout your career journey. So great to see you. Thank All you. right, we'll move up next to Sandra, I'm sorry, um, to Dana, and then on deck will be Vicki. You did, Dana. You told me I, I was next. And then I'm sorry, Vicky. See, my, my brain is all befuddled right now. You We're helping good. you out. You put your notes in anyway. So we knew I what know, you were I don't thinking. know what's going on right now, but Sue will be next, followed by Vicki. Thank you, Sue. Um, hi, I'm Sue Griffey, known as Sue Mentors in the Virtual World, and I run a global mentoring practice, which means I work with people all over the world who are in some kind of transition, almost always job career related. I am here because I realized as you were talking, Brenda, I have been in charge of my brand since many decades ago when I lived overseas and there was no way except by letters to keep in touch with people and see people. And it was all about how do they know what I can consult on as I move to different countries. And when you offered this, what I take away from it is how can I, who run this individually. Um, what can I learn from you, as I always do learn from you, but also from others about how do you not get overwhelmed in all the detail of marketing and social media when you have many, many other things to do? So Sandra, I was really interested in your new opportunity, having met you a couple of meetings ago and thinking, oh, wow, this will be uh, an interesting opportunity. But then how, how do you keep from not getting pulled too far this direction. So I love coming to your meetings, Brenda. Interesting people and interesting opportunities. Thank you. Oh, great. Well, we're always glad to have you here, Sue. Okay, Vicki, I will give you the opportunity. Would you like to introduce yourself? And you can be camera on or camera off. Totally up sure. to you, Vicky. Go ahead. Yep. I'm working in a, um, not in an office today, so I'm going to keep the camera off for now. But I, um, mm -hmm. I do want to take the opportunity to introduce myself. So good morning to everybody I know. Um, I'm kind of jumping on in the fourth session here, but I had done a face-to-face on-site. We did a team um, training with Brenda about a month ago. Um, so I was pretty excited about the content she shared. And I come from the automotive sector. Um, I'm responsible for our HR marketing and branding, including our social media for North America. 
Um, caveat to that, our LinkedIn is a global page. So I never get to see what are the capabilities that we might want to be tackling from an advertising perspective. Like how do we want to, you know, kind of grow our audience and, and boost those posts and maybe put some money behind them with, with LinkedIn as a platform. Um, so kind of working on building that knowledge where I can maybe go back to the global team and say, Hey, I want to pilot this for us. Yeah. Great. Well, we're always here to, um, to support and share new knowledge. And I'm delighted. I was like, I've looked up your name. I'm like, I know she, she looks familiar and I'm trying to place you and I had to look up your profile to remember. Um, but I'm delighted to see you on the call here today. And even with video off, I'm, I'm always fine with video on or video off. Uh, I had another call before. Otherwise, I would probably have been a little bit more fresh faced this morning. And I've gotten comfortable with that. But some mornings I just am camera off and I totally respect and get that. So I'm delighted to see you. And by the way, thank you for mentioning. I do offer team training and I'll just do a little quick plug on that. I do work with organizations across the world. Um, I had the opportunity to go to Vicky's team in person and do some training on LinkedIn. And most of the time when I'm training people on LinkedIn, they already know LinkedIn, but I am always like, I come in and I dial it up for them. And I just tweak some things on their profile or their approaches. And I always find there's people that come into the trainings at the beginning and they're a little, bit, a little bit like, why are we here? We know LinkedIn already. And then at the end of the training, they'll sometimes leave and come up to me and say, wow, I didn't know what I didn't know. This was amazing. This was such a great uh, uh, you know, time well spent in, in the session. So quick plug for that. If you're interested in learning more, go to mellermarketing.com. And finally, we have Julia, who is my intern on the call. And I messaged her and I don't know. Oh, I said, do you want to introduce yourself? And she said, I'm good. Thank you. Which is like when my daughter, when I asked my daughter, do you want to go with me to my event? And she's like, I'm good. I'm like, ah, but you'll have fun. Um, and I will just, I'm going to do a plug for Julia on her behalf. Um, Julia is an amazing intern. She is the marketing and social media intern at Meller Marketing. And uh, she's been working with me for a little over a year right now. She is getting ready to graduate in December with a bachelor's degree from Wayne State University in marketing. She is amazing. And she's going to find an amazing job when she graduates. I'm not rushing her out by any means, but she's at the point of the internship where we had the discussion about, um, you know, when are you going to start looking for a job? And, you know, I'm curious if others on the call have any advice for Julia as she starts on that path of looking for a job in marketing entry level. Uh, she already has experience. She has well over a year's worth of experience working here with Meller Marketing in both marketing and social media. She interviews well, she will get a great job and somebody's going to be so lucky to get her. I don't want to lose her, but I also know I'm not paying her what she deserves. I do pay my interns. I don't believe in free internships, but um, she'll make someone a great hire. So I respect the fact that you don't want to introduce yourself, Julia, but I'm not going to let this meeting go without giving you a huge plug and shout out because you have been such an amazing um, person to work with. All right. So with that said, I'm going to open up the floor now and I call this VIP office hours for social media managers and marketers. And it would almost be like if we worked in the same office building on Fridays, the fourth Friday of the month, my door would be open and I'd be sitting at a, at a conference table because I've got one of those cool fancy offices with a conference table on them, right? And maybe I've got a cur again there. So I've made myself a, a cup of coffee and I'm kind of sitting in there and Sue walks by and she taps on the door and she says, Brenda, do you have a minute? I have a marketing question for you or a LinkedIn question or a social media question. I'd be like, sure, Sue, come on in. And then Dana's down the hall and Dana kind of says, can I sit in with you guys too? And we're like, yeah, come on. And then Sandra is like, oh, are you guys chatting? I'm going to grab my my tea or coffee and I'll meet you in there. And, and we're all kind of sitting around chatting. So we're going to keep this kind of free flowing um, Sue, I see that your hand is raised, so I'll ask others to follow Sue's lead on that. If you have a question, you'd like to jump into the conversation, raise your hand. Since we're a smaller group, we may just unmute and do kind of popcorn style in the conversation here today, but we'll try to do the hand raising initially because it keeps the flow going. So Sue, what question or comment do you have for the conversation here today? Well, first, can I give, may I give Julia um, advice? You said, do you have any advice yes, you, for her? You, it's mother, may I? Yes, you may. All right, Julia, no matter how old I am, I'm a lot older than you. And I started taking a coaching speaking, magnetically speaking course a year and a half ago. And I have put myself in every hot seat. So my advice for you is these small meetings with Brenda are a safe space. I'd love it if you would unmute and practice 
your intro, because the intro I made today, if you go back to old, old VIP meetings from a year and a half or two years ago, I was all about la 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 la. So that's my advice for you. Practice speaking where it's safe to do. This is one of, I mean, you know, you've got one of the best um, mentors and you've said that to me when I, when we've exchanged messages, but I think that would be great. Don't have to do it today, but just think about it and think about it. And maybe it's something even you and Brenda could work on. My question, Brenda, is something that has been nagging at me for a few months, and it's social media writ large, marketing, branding. I have a company of one. You know, I have a couple of people who help me on specific things I do, but I notice so many people when they post on LinkedIn, talk about their company as we, we, and yet they're mm -hmm. all solopreneurs. I know them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Where do we land on the I, we, is it considered that you should always represent yourself as we, or, you know, how do you do it? Or what, what advice do you have? Cause I realize this is the perfect place to ask that question. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, what's interesting is I was presenting at a conference last night and someone came up to me. And she said, how many people do you have working at Meller Marketing with you? And I said, I have myself and an intern. And she's like, wow, I thought you were like an agency. I thought you had like, you know, a bunch of people working with you. And I said, I, I subcontract sometimes. I have people that I consult with and, and do other works. But I said, it when I first launched my business, I, I came from a corporate environment where I was part of a team and there's multiple levels and layers. And I certainly could have grown an agency myself. But part of the reason I wanted to stay self-employed was to have more flexibility and freedom. And, you know, for me, it's more of like a lifestyle business. I want to build my business around the lifestyle I would choose to have at this point, obviously supporting the income level I have as well. But um, I have always treated my business, Meller Marketing, as an entity. And most organizations will follow the same rule of thought when they refer to their organization. It's we, our, things like that. So uh, it's, I, I mean, you could certainly set it up as part of your brand and style guidelines that you are referring to yourself, you know, in the I and me in first person, and you refer to your business and you use I, me and I, and, and things like that. Typically organizations, because they are entities are more third party language. We, our, or they, them, they type of language in there. Um, what I like about it, even if you're a small operation, when you're referring to yourself as our team and we and things like that, it does make you sound bigger than you are. Um, perhaps more, I don't want to say well-established, but maybe more well-established because you've been around for a while. Um, I feel comfortable with that language, even if you are a solopreneur and it is only you because the business is an entity. I'll use a, another analogy. My friend, John Esperian, if you're not following John yet on LinkedIn, I highly recommend it. E-S-P-I-R-I-A-N, I believe is his last name. I'll ask Julia if you can drop her his LinkedIn URL into the chat. But John, when he refers to LinkedIn, he'll say LinkedIn, uh, what, what, he will always refer it as a plural now, LinkedIn um, recommend that. And I'll always LinkedIn as a single now, LinkedIn recommends that. And when I read John's language, I, I even reached out to him at one point and I said, why, you know, why, I'm just curious, why do you do that? Is that their style brand line or your preference? I can't remember what he said, but every time he refers to them as an entity, he will use the plural in, in terms of the, the, the subject and verb agreement. Um, so there's preferences, I think, that are out there. Is it a British thing? I don't know. Maybe it is a British thing. I'm not sure. But um at any rate, I always recommend for solopreneurs, whether you are just getting started or you are well-established, I prefer referring to your organization as a separate entity because I, Brenda Meller, am a human being person with thoughts and feelings and you know influences and values and things like that. My business is an extension of me. So Meller Marketing has a logo, it has colors, it has fonts, it has service offerings that are a part of it. If you think about the timeline and, and the bigger picture, there are organizations, and I'll just use an example. I was at the event last night and there's a guy there, um, I can't remember his name right now, but he was one of the co-founders of Garden Fresh Salsa. Um and I can't remember his name, I'm blanking on it. But anyways, he was telling the story of Garden Fresh Salsa and how they grew it out of this factory in Thern Ferndale and they made the salsa in five gallon buckets and they grew it larger and larger and they had to get equipment and all these other things. And at one point he was at an event and there was somebody on the Campbell Soup Company 
um, leadership team sitting next to him and they got into a side conversation and Campbell Soup said, what would it take for us to buy your company from you? And he's like, nothing. And then they came back to the table and there was a price and they ended up selling it. Um, some things had happened, you know, and, and Campbell Soup ended up selling it to another company and, you know, they lost some value in that. Um, but he went from owning Garden Fresh Salsa, so it was a part of him, to selling Garden Fresh Salsa to, to someone else. So think about your organization can be sold or given to someone else. You can't. You know, you are an individual, an entity, uh, not an entity, you are an individual. You will always be a part of yourself. Your business is an extension of you. So that's part of the reason I like to refer to they, them, us, our, as opposed to I, me. Does that help, Sue? Yeah, I see your heads. Okay, and does anyone else yeah. in the group, do you want to add anything to that or would anyone well, else in the my group only, like to? My only concern sometimes in the global world is people come because they want me and I know that and I don't mean that the way it sounds. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they've they heard from friends. Sue Griffey tells you like it is. Sue Griffey will give you, you know, her videos. And so I'm careful, like when I was writing the course material, uh, the course um the mm -hmm. launch stuff that we did in August for the the new cohort to carefully say yes, and you get um, Sue Griffey, that's me, Sue Mentors. I'm, you know, it's still me kind of thing. So I do talk about my company sometimes as we, but I'm trying to figure out where to land on generally without having to explain yes, but it's still going to be me there. So yeah, you so it's, me I mean, some thoughts about it's, that. I think about this when I send an invoice to someone, I've created an LLC for my business, Meller Marketing LLC, and it says Meller Marketing LLC on the, on the invoice when I send it out to them. And that creates some, um, some delineation between me and my personal assets and the assets of my business and a different bank account and everything along those lines too. So when people um, are looking to work with me and even on my landing pages, I'll drop one of them. Actually, Julia, can you put the one-to-one -one services landing page into the chat right now? In that landing page, it will describe, there's a executive coaching package that I do. And I say, all work is provided by Brenda Meller. Okay. Um, I do not outsource. I do not use chat GPT or any AI functions to create your profile for you. It's my brain and my logic. Like I will say, all work is performed by Brenda Miller. And there may be some things that I do have Julia helping with sometimes on other projects, but when I'm doing profiles, I don't. The work is done by me. So you can certainly spell that out on a landing page for people. All work is performed by Sue Griffey or all coaching is done by Sue Griffey. Um, as your team grows, maybe you add another coach in there and then you'll have to um, expand that brand a bit. Does that help? That really helps. And thank you. I, I will look at the landing page because I'm tool I'm getting my website finally ready and um I have a coach who works on just one part of what I do uh occasionally so perfect yeah. Brenda this is really helpful Sandra I see your hand is raised did you want to add something to the conversation yes and actually Sue you just at the tail end of your statement you mentioned that sometimes you do pull in other people depending on the level of services that are required well, that would encompass the we, because you do provide singular service. And as, as the project or services uh, are required, you do have the ability to pull in other people, other resources. So that would encompass the we. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like potato, potato, semantics. So keeping that in mind, you are the you are the company. You're providing the service. It's and I agree with Brenda. It is the we. It's in the third party. But you do also, depending on the scope of services, have the ability to call upon your network. I hope that helps. And you just reminded me of something too, Sandra. When you were talking, I think John Aspirin is the one who has it. I'm going to see if Julia, if you can find it on his website. But he has a website listing his team. And John's a solopreneur. So he has, I, I don't know what the different categories, but it's company president and it's John, a picture of John Aspirian. IT department, it's a different picture of John Aspirian with a slightly different pose. Um, sales department, it's another picture of John Aspirian with a different pose. And he, it's like, he's got like the org chart, but they're all him. They are literally all him. Um, one of my other friends is creating a business and she said that some of her clients are concerned with 
that it is just her. So she's now offering, uh, she has a web page where she lists, here's some of the um, individual, and I don't know how she's list, listing the language, but she might say legal partner, and then she lists the lawyer that she's working with, or she's listing me, asking to list me as her LinkedIn and marketing partner. So she'll be linking to me and putting my photo and description on the website. So that's another way um, you can think about making your team seem bigger than it is. And obviously in the case of putting other people on your website, you want to reach out to them, clarify what it is that you're um, saying about them on your website. And if there is any sort of an affiliate program where they're getting referral bonuses or you're referring business to them and you're getting bonuses from them, make sure that you're clear on that. But um, these are just, I, I love this discussion because I even forgot about the John thing until Sandra was just talking. I'm like, oh my God, it was brilliant. I saw it. I'm like, John, you're brilliant. Like I get so many great ideas from him. And um, thank you, Julie. I want to take a, a quick peek at that page. All right. Um, does anyone else have anything to add to that conversation about the business as an entity, about building your team, about any examples of things that you've seen? Feel free to bring them up. Um, if not, I'm going to pull up John's webpage since we're talking about this right now, and I'm going to share it on screen so you can all look at this. Is this the about John? Is this the page where he lists? Okay, this is it. So let me pull it up on screen. Give me just a second here to share the page. And... Let's do a Zoom. It takes a second sometimes to share the screen in here. Okay, here it is. So this is the, the link that Julia just put inside chat. Isn't she great? I say, can you find the link? And she goes off and finds it and drops it in there. So um, he even, you know, throughout his website, I want you to pay very close attention to everything is intentional. Um, look at the cookie consent at the bottom. He doesn't just use the standard language. Everything he does, he has personality, a bit of wit, and a bit of John in there. So cookie consent. Yes, my website uses cookies too. I assume that's okay with you, but you can rebel and opt out if you want to. So everything on his website is done that. It's intentional. It's succinct. So we scroll down, you know, and he's got these bitmoji cartoony thing. He's got a great color palette that he uses. He's such a great example of marketing. Um, are you a one-person business? I love this. Zero office politics at Asperian Towers. By the way, on your LinkedIn company page, you all should have one for your business if you're self-employed. You can list the name of your business. And what I do is you put the name of your business and then you can say location type or location name. And I put world headquarters. So Meller Marketing World Headquarters is my home office here, guys. It's not like I have like a big office building in New York or Chicago, but I like that. And he's saying zero office politics at Experian Towers. So maybe he's in a second level uh, apartment or flat. I can make my tea with two tea bags and no one can tell me off. Here's his org chart. Um, and I don't know if these are clickable. I don't think they are, but how hilarious. And the design guy is upside down. Um, and he's also employee of the month again. By the way, if you're self-employed, highly recommend making yourself employee of the month and doing a post on your business page. Um, people will get it. I did this once before and it was one of my top performing posts on the company page of all time. I would give Julia the challenge to find it, but it was probably three years ago and I don't know how long it would take you to find it in there. But I did a picture of me and, and said, Meller Marketing is proud to name Brenda Meller Employee of the Month. And this was during a time that I didn't have any interns working for me. So there weren't, you know, there was not much competition, so to speak. But I did a post and then I, Brenda Muller, commented on the post thanking the company for the great honor. And I had a bunch of people because I was tagged in the post that went out to my homepage feed that acknowledged and congratulated me. And um, it was a bit of like a tongue in cheek, just a humorous type of a thing. But you can have some fun with your business when you're self employed. You can make yourself look bigger than you are. And you can also take some liberties and do some things that big companies can't do because you can't, you wouldn't do that at a normal company. You wouldn't, the president wouldn't name himself or herself employee of the month, but when you're self-employed, you can do that. Um, and by the way, you can also promote yourself. I highly recommend giving yourself promotions when you're self-employed. And I want to show you something that I did on my LinkedIn profile. Um, I'm going to pull it up as I'm talking about this right now. I take a second to log in here. And if you are following or connected with me on LinkedIn, you may have noticed you got a notification from LinkedIn in the past week. Congratulate Brenda Meller on seven years at Meller Marketing. And when that first came through, I was started to get a little flurry of people direct messaging me. Congratulations. And I was like trying to figure out where is it coming from? And I look at in my experience section, Meller Marketing, 
So when I first created Meller Marketing, it was actually even prior to 2016. If I look at the LLC forming date, I don't even remember when it was, like 2014, 15, something like that, but I don't sync it up necessarily here. So when I first started the company, um, I put 20 September of 2016 as my start date. Maybe that was my LLC start date now that I think about it, because I actually left corporate in August of 2017, and I really became full-time doing this for my business in uh, January of 2018. But it was a bit of a fuzzy. It wasn't like there was a one date where I had my flag up and like, I'm in business. There was a couple milestones along the way. But I always kept, this is the LLC forming date, September 2016 in there. And I must've put it on the day that it created the company page. I don't know. But at any rate, if you do have a start month and date on your profile in your experience section for your role as your business. And the other thing is, let me just click on this pencil icon, getting into the nested menu into the experience section. You have to have notify network toggled to on. If you do, then LinkedIn will notify your network of key profile changes. And the only thing that will go out is a new job, or if you get promoted, that will go out as a notification, work anniversary. So that's why the Meller marketing notification went out. And it actually said seven years. Technically, I've been doing this for six years, you know, and maybe a little over five full time in here. But um, what I did is as the notifications are coming in, um, let me see if I can find one as an example. I've been messaging people back and saying, you know, thanks for the the kind words. I can't find any right now. Um, maybe Kathy was one of them. I'm not sure, but people are saying, oh, here it is right here. Congratulations on your work anniversary. And then it's a messaging point. Now I didn't reply to everyone who messaged me back, but the people that I knew well, I did message back. And by the way, because I have LinkedIn premium, this is brilliant. This is like such a great marketing thing. With LinkedIn Premium, you can set an away message. This is only available to you if you're using a paid version of LinkedIn. It can be Job Seeker Premium. It can be Business Premium or Sales Navigator. And you'll go to your messaging box in the top left corner, click on the three dots, and you'll click on Update Away Message. And just make sure that it's toggled to on. Now, since I'm in here, it's going to force me to change this. And I'm going to update the date period in here too. So this is something that you can set. It's similar to an out of office and you have 300 characters. You can, I'm going to give you a couple of marketing techniques. If you're using premium that you can consider in here, you can promote an upcoming event like I have done. Um, now this particular webinar, finding leads on LinkedIn for your coaching, consulting, or speaking business has multiple dates. So instead of listing out the dates, I just put upcoming free live webinar with the web link in here. Um, when you click to go to the page, you can see the dates that are listed and LinkedIn saying, hey, if you trust this link, yeah, I trust myself. Thank you, LinkedIn. And when you go to the landing page, I have the webinar dates that are listed there. Um, you can also use the away message to push people to a recent post. So sometimes what I'll say in here is this is an away message and feel free if you like the language, you can use this. This is an away message, a LinkedIn premium feature similar to an out of office. Why do I put that in there? Because I don't want people to think I'm sitting in front of the computer and I just sent this back to them because it looks spammy, right? So this explains, hey, this is just like an automated thing. And then I say, until I can respond to your message. And then what's the note? Check out my upcoming free live webinar or here's my latest LinkedIn post or I'm proud to announce my new podcast or check out my new company page on LinkedIn and give it a follow. So there's a variety of different things that you can do from a marketing perspective if you have that away message. But going back to, um, you know, the individual profile and listing your anniversary dates and even giving yourself a promotion. So when I first started my company, I was calling myself a marketing consultant at Meller Marketing. That was my job title. I set a revenue goal for myself. When I achieved that revenue goal in, in a specific month, I, I said I was going to promote myself to CEO and I put out at the time, some different polls to my network. And I said, I don't want it to be chief executive officer. I want it to be something fun and a little bit, you know, more loose and playful because that's who I am. So what should the CEO stand for? And I did some posts about it. I did some polls and we ended up landing on chief engagement officer because people said, you're always trying to engage people on LinkedIn. I'm like, I love it. 
So I promoted myself to chief engagement officer. I did a YouTube video announcing it. I got a gift from a friend, which says CEO mode on it. It's like a weekly calendar, a dry erase board on it. And I, I revealed it during my promotion video where I promoted myself. And then when I put this on my profile, it was in May of 2019, LinkedIn pushed it out as a notification. And at the time it just said, congratulate Brenda on being named chief engagement officer at Mellor Marketing. Now, every year, what happens because I have this turned on in May, a notification goes out to everyone in my network. Congratulate Brenda on celebrating four years at Miller Marketing. Um, a couple months later, you get another one in September. Congratulate Brenda on celebrating seven years at Miller Marketing. Now, you may have recalled in May that you got a notification. Probably not because we all get so many messages that are coming through. So I have two opportunities to talk about Miller Marketing in my post. Similarly, I created a company page for my podcast, and I have a notification that goes out every April. Congratulate Brenda on celebrating one year and enthusiastically self-employed will go out next April. And then I have a book. And if any of you have a book, I recommend doing this too. Create a book page or a company page for your book on LinkedIn. I did turn this one off because it was like I was getting too many notifications in a row. And the podcast is a higher priority, but you could put your book anniversary date in there as well. So a couple different ways of looking at that. All right. Um, let's see. I want to see if there are any additional questions from the group or if this is prompting you to think of anything differently about your own marketing. Feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like, because we're a small group. Um, if not, I'll just keep keep on talking and I'll, I'll offer you some additional ideas on marketing and social media. Um, I don't see any hands being raised. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about um, a web page that I put together. I was on uh, another call this morning with an organization called Speaker Friends, and we were talking about promoting others. Oh, whoops, let me do that. Special offers with an S. By the way, I even have a fun 404 error message that I put on my website with a fun picture of me. It's just not a generic one. I'm I'm pulling up. You know, I'm being inspired by John Asperian. He does everything intentional. And this isn't just like the page you look for cannot be found, go back to the homepage. Like I, I added in some personality. The page you're looking for doesn't exist or has been moved, or let's be honest, it could be a typo on your part or on my part. It's possible, we're both human. Unless you're a bot, are you a bot? At any rate, here we are, you're looking for a page that doesn't exist. That's about as frustrating as someone eating the last piece of pie and not offering to share it. Or like my son went to McDonald's the other night with his girlfriend. And he came home and he said, we got McDonald's. And I said, where's my pie? They have pumpkin pies at McDonald's right now. And they're like super small. So you don't have to feel too guilty about eating them. I said, where's my pie? He's like, I didn't get you any. I go, well, then why would you even tell me that you went to McDonald's? Just go up to your room and close the door and let's be done with you. <laughs> at any rate, I said, you know, that and return to my homepage or email me and tell me what you were looking for. And we'll look into it ASAP. So let me correct the name of the page and you'll look at the real page now. So in the call this morning, I was talking about this, and I think this is a really great idea for you for marketing and for social media, for building up network engagement, for showcasing your affiliations. And um, if you're not already doing this already, I highly recommend every product or service that you are using for your business. If you like the product or service, look at their website and see, do they offer any sort of a discount code that you can give to your webpage visitors, your email list? Or do they have an affiliate program where if you refer them out, you get something back? Um, and that's what I've done on this web page. And I, in the top of the page, by the way, if you like what I've said, you can feel free to copy it and mirror it. Obviously, you'll change Meller Marketing to the name of your business, my email address to your, your email address on here. Um, but I, I explain on here, you know, thanks for checking into my special offers and partner discounts. I only include links on this page for product services I use, current or past, for products and services I support, and for individuals and companies who align with my personal values. So not everyone gets in here. I only hand select the people that go on here. And then I say, often these offers include a discount or special offer for you. Not always. So that's why I said often. Sometimes there's not something for them in it. If you click a link from this page and purchase an item, I may receive a commission. And this is kind of the truth in advertising thing that we're starting to see a lot more of on social media where you have to disclose, are you being paid or sponsored or endorsed for promoting someone else? So I let people know I may receive a commission. The commission comes from the vendor after purchase and does not increase 
what's the cost to you? I think that's important to mention because they might say, I'm just going to go direct to them because I'm going to get a better rate. I'm not paying for your bonus. No, you don't have to pay anything higher than that. Some of the below offers do include a discount for you as noted. And I will always spell out in here. And if you have any questions, I give you my email address in here. So as you're going through, you're going to notice, and by the way, Julia helped me to build this webpage. Um, sometimes it will say things like take the quiz. Um, other times it will say click here to sign up. If there is a discount, I try to disclose that in the button. So for example, Buzzsprout is the platform I'm using for um, hosting my podcast. And it says sign up and earn a $20 credit. So if it does include a discount, I will spell that out. Um, sometimes it's for free events or resources. And I like to use the word free in the description inside there. Um, what else? Sometimes they're bigger than others. Gusto is what I use for payroll processing. I was using ADP before, but I found it was too big and too expensive for what I needed for one intern. I ended up using Gusto instead. And I've had two people click on my link and I get an email from Gusto saying somebody signed, signed up for a Gusto account, but you don't actually get paid out until they process their first payroll. So I'm waiting to see if they do that. But um, some of these are a little bit larger than others. There's been um, some some affiliate bonuses where if I refer business to them, I get 50% of the sale. And I had that happen once where it was a $750 commission to me. So it was a $1,500 product and I got $750 from the vendor. So that's pretty easy money to make affiliate uh, commission. So highly recommend reaching out to all of your services that you use and ask, do they offer an affiliate program? Now, there are a couple of services I use that don't offer one, like Calendly, for example. I don't know why they don't offer an affiliate um, bonus or link or anything, because I refer them all the time, but they don't get on my webpage because I'm not getting anything back from them. And it's an entity. I don't know anybody who personally works for Calendly. Uh, I was on a call, the Innovation Women call this morning. There's a guy, Bobby um, Samuels is a part of it. And he's a big supporter of, of women. And he has a no more bad Zoom office hours that he does every Friday. I've been a part of it and it's been an amazing call for networking. So even though I'm not getting anything, I've been a part of his calls. I would vouch for, you know, being a part of those. So I'm, I've added, asked Julia to edit. So she actually is already on here. That's how fast she is. So she added in the link to him and it, it is a free call on there and I've been a part of it. And then there's organizations that I belong to as a member, John Experience, Espresso Plus, he does offer an affiliate program. Um, happy scribe, you can get 10 minutes free. So a lot of these, I think you all know, you get something um, in exchange and sometimes you get the first month for free or like, I think Kajabi is one where if you use my link, you get 30 days for free versus if you sign up on the public site, you only get 15 days for free. Sometimes they extend it to 30, but usually it's, it's 15 as a standard. So um, feel free if you like this, mimic it, create a web page of your own. Robbie on the call this morning, he was talking about, he doesn't call it special offers. He calls it something different to market it uh, in a different way. Um, and then periodically I will do shout outs. I'm starting to do in my email newsletters once a month, I'm going to do one issue of my emails once a month that goes out to my VIP email list, summarizing special offers or discounts that are located in there. So, um, you know, that's another way. And then when I send it out, um, this month I was profiling, let me just go back up to the top, Amy Porterfield, by the way, um, Amy Porterfield is the person I learned from through her digital course Academy and through her list building society. So if you have ever downloaded one of my checklists, I'm going to have Julia put the link inside chat right now, um, that was inspired by Amy Porterfield. So I try to promote those checklists wherever I go. If I'm on an event that's talking to podcasters, I have a LinkedIn for podcasters checklist. If I'm on an event that's speaking to job seekers, I have a do this now checklist. So I created checklists based on the segments of the audiences that I promote. That was created and in, in inspired by List Building Society. I have two online courses right now, the recipe for social selling on LinkedIn for um, coaches, consultants, speakers, and authors. And I have another one called Bootcamp with Brenda, which is an online program for experienced rich job seekers. Both of those were built through the DCA program structure created by Amy. Um, so I highly recommend, um, I, and Amy Porterfield is one person that I've been promoting this month. Um, she's doing her own program launch at the same time. And then Bobby Klink, I purchased his legal uh, template library and uh, it's amazing. Instead of having to Google search and figure out whether these documents are legit, 
it's an online document generator. You pick the category, you type in your business name, the name of their business, terms and conditions, price points, you know, disclaimers. It automatically creates a template. And then from there, I download the template and I, I have a contract through Legal Shield where I get access to an attorney to review it. And they are licensed in the state of Michigan. So I feel very comfortable using the templates that he has created and then having my attorney look through them. And I feel like I can sleep good at night knowing my legal documents are going to uphold my business. All right. I see a question coming up in chat from Sue. Where is the special offers? That's a great question. And I think that's an important point to think about on your website. Um, my friend Kendra Corman has a podcast about this. I'm going to see if I can find it. I don't know, Julia, if you want to do a web search and look for Kendra Corman's podcast, it's called Imperfect Marketing. And she has an episode of her podcast where she talks about doing a podcast audit on yourself. We don't think about doing this, but she says like once a year, you should do this. Like I'll go on your website homepage, first of all. And if you wanted to do business with yourself, could you figure it out? How to do so? And are all of the important links on the homepage? And that's part of the reason I move my checklist up to the top because a lot of times people are kind of looky lose, right? And you might, something might catch your attention in here and you click to download that. And by the way, these always will open up in a new window. So if you click on a link, it takes you over to the company page checklist. But if you close that tab, if you're like, no, I don't really want that. You don't navigate away from my website. You're navigating back to the homepage again. And then I make sure that my top services, the ones that I'm really promoting are all outlined on my homepage. And I have action buttons to take you right there. If you scroll down, there's videos, resources, LinkedIn recommendations. I still like the use of a fat footer. And these were a trend for a while and they went away. Um, but this allows you to see all of the pages of the website, at least all the important pages of the website at a quick glance. Because if you're looking for something and you can't find it, it can get frustrating and you might click off of the website. But if you scroll down to the bottom, I know I will often do this working with clients. I'll look for I'm helping them with talent recruitment or positioning their profiles to support talent recruitment. I'll see like, where's their careers page? And I go to the homepage. If it's not on the top menu, usually you can go to the bottom and you can find a careers link in the fat footer in here. Um, and Julia helped me to come up with both the categories and then the subcategories where things are listed under. And there's sometimes there's things like, um, where does team training fit? Does that fit inside presentations? Maybe not. Maybe it fits under its own category. Um, so we try to list things in the right category in there. But yeah, having a fat footer, I think it helps with both SEO as well as with if people are just navigating around a site and they, maybe they don't know exactly what they're looking for. They're just looking to learn more about you and what your products and service offerings are. Related to that, since we're on a call for social media managers and marketers, I want to encourage you that you should have social media icons on your website homepage. There are two places people look for these. In the top of your website, or in the very bottom of your website, okay? So make it easy for them. Um, I think Kajabi, I don't think I can change the order. I think they force you to keep this order. Otherwise, I would have LinkedIn first. You guys know me. But I think this is the order you have to have them in. Um, if you hover over each of these, you can see the Facebook points to my Meller Marketing page, not my personal profile. You might use your personal profile for your business, and, and that's the case, and feel free. Twitter, I have a Meller Marketing account. I'm not calling it X yet. I'm fighting it a little bit here, but um, I, I point people to the Meller Marketing, even though both are open and public, I point people there. Um, the Instagram points to my Meller Marketing. I do have a personal Instagram, but that's only family and friends, very close family and, and very close friends and family, I should say. YouTube, you can hyperlink to get to my YouTube channel. Um, Julia, I'm wondering in there too, in the fat footer, can we change the YouTube link to use the subscribe as a part of it. And this was something I learned recently. I want to say Kevin D. Turner. I could be mistaken. But there's a way that you can share your YouTube channel link and you put, it's like question mark equals subscribe at the end of it. And when people go to your YouTube channel, they'll get a pop-up button that will say subscribe to this channel on YouTube. And they can click out of it, but it gives them an action that they can take. And I like that because I've grown some new subscribers from that technique. So see if you can change that to put the subscribe link in there. And then I've got my Pinterest and my LinkedIn. You can only, in my website, you can only use one LinkedIn link. I certainly could do the company page instead of my personal profile, but my personal profile has the largest presence. But what I see a lot of organizations not doing is not putting a LinkedIn link on their homepage. And they don't think about it because their biggest presence typically is on Facebook or Instagram, sometimes YouTube. 
and they have a LinkedIn page, but they haven't put it on there. And part of the work that I do when I'm working with my clients on company page strategy and LinkedIn strategy is I test out the links and I see if they work and I even click on them and does it open in a new window? Um, if not, once you click out of this window, then you've, you've clicked out of the website. And if I can't remember the name of your site, you've lost me. I stopped navigating from there. So I think that's an important thing to test. And for you, even like throughout your website, think about, I, I typically will always navigate it to open in a new tab or open in a new window. Very rarely do I have them navigate off of a page entirely, because what if they accidentally click the wrong thing? I want to have them be able to return back to that web page again. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking right now, but Sandra, I see uh, you said you love fat footers. Um, sometimes the web page is missing from the, the main menu. Sounds like your organizations, the ones that you've worked with, have used fat footers in the past too. Is that fair to say? Actually, it's when I'm looking for information on someone else's website. And so I'll go in the menu and the menu item and or sub menu item isn't there. So then I automatically go down to the fat footer and the link is there in the fat footer. Okay. Yeah. Because so, for example, uh, there's been some instances where I need to find the contact page and it's not listed in the main menu in the upper menu. So yeah. I have to scroll down to the fat footer and then there's a link to the contact page. Yeah. That's a really good point. And yeah, just let's make it easy for people. Like if they want to, I mean, even think about that. Go to your homepage right now. If you just wanted to get in contact with someone, do you have a contact button or contact us button somewhere that's easy to find? Good point, Sandra. Julia is awesome. I'm like, hey, I don't know if you can find it or not, but here's the episode of Kendra Corman's Imperfect Marketing. I might actually invite her out some week. I might start doing like um, VIP guests coming on these office hours with us, but I really love, love her podcast. I'm, I've been following her. She's about a year ahead of me in her podcast, but I've been following her um, on her podcast journey. And because she works in marketing, there's a lot of topics that she covers in her podcast that are applicable to me and to what I do for my business. I also come from a corporate marketing background. So I'll be honest, the longer I've been out of corporate, it's going on six years now. Sometimes I start to feel a little out of touch, like, well, what are people doing in corporate? Not that I ever want to go back. But I also want to make sure I'm understanding where marketing has evolved and where it's going. And um, she does a really great job of bringing in guests, but she also does some solo talks. And this one was about auditing your website. And it's just got a great transcript. And it will even list out in the transcript, here are some things to look for, you know, when you're doing that website audit. I, I love this point to test your forms. I can't tell you how often I'm working with a client. There's a contact us form. I fill it out. And I ask them, where does this go? And they say, I don't know. And then I say, you need to check and see where that goes. And um, probably about half of the time they'll reach out and it's actually going to the website. It's not being notifying anybody. So the, the forms are not getting answered. Um, I just realized this week, I have a form on my website for if you're interested in booking me for team training, there's a form that you fill out and I don't get a lot of hits on it, but um, usually people just contact me directly. But in this case, Somebody messaged me or requested the form and I um, I got it in my inbox and then I did a, a search for that same form title because I'm like, I don't get a lot of these. And guess what had happened? My Gmail was marking those as spam and I had three other requests that were sitting inside spam. The, the, the oldest one was from January of this year and I felt awful because this company had reached out to me with a team training request for LinkedIn and that's a pretty lucrative project for me and I had not responded back to them. Now, the person that reached out to me, I wasn't connected with them on LinkedIn. I did reach out, invite them to connect. I did respond to the email and explain that my computer had put it into my Gmail, put it into spam. And I apologized for that. The other person, though, that prompted me, I told him, hey, I just realized you had submitted the same request to me a week ago, and I apologize for not getting back to you sooner. And he said, that's okay. I think we were connected on LinkedIn. He said, that's okay. He's like, that felt off brand for me. So if you didn't respond to this one, I was going to I was going to call you or email you. Um, so I was like, that's good because I don't want to lose business over this. But going back to the point of checking your forms, um, checking even when you're holding events, checking your webinar registration, like test yourself. 
Um, a lot of times I'll have Julia will test, I'll test, I'll say, test it with your Gmail instead of your Mellor Marketing. When we use the add event, that gets a little tricky sometimes. So I'll say, test adding that to your calendar. Did it update the series or just the event? So we'll kind of test those things out. And if there are issues, I mean, I will all often do this. If someone reaches out to me and points out some glaring error mistake thing that did, ha did happen that wasn't supposed to happen or didn't happen and should have, whatever, I will say, thank you for pointing it out to me. Can you provide me with your address? I'm going to send you a free copy of my book as a thank you for doing this. And they're always like, wow, you don't need to do that. And I'm like, no, I appreciate it. You, you didn't need to reply back to me and you didn't need to tell me these things. But um, it doesn't cost me a lot. You know, I'm, I've got a shipment of books here. It cost me a little bit in terms of shipping, but sending it out to them um, as an acknowledgement for a member of my community reaching out. And it's like, if I had spinach on my teeth, I hope that you would tell me, right? And thank you for telling me I had spinach on my teeth and that the form didn't work or the thing didn't do the thing that it did. Um, right now, I'm going through an issue with all, multiple checklists. So what happens is when you subscribe, when you download a checklist, you're actually subscribed to an email sequence. You get like three to five messages from me. And I thought I had set it up so that if you subscribe to multiple checklists, you would only be getting one sequence, but the, the tag wasn't working properly. So I had a woman email me and she said, hey, I got three messages from you today. I just want to let you know. And another person emailed me and said, I need to opt out because it's too much. And I said, what the heck is going on? So then I put out an ask in two places. I put it out, I think on Facebook and on Threads. And I said, can someone help to test this out for me? You can't have subscribed to one of the checklists yet. And you need to subscribe to at least two of them. And then tell me what messages you're getting from me. In exchange, I'm going to give you a free book. And I said, offer valid for the first five people. So I'm not going to get like a million people doing this. Sue was one of those people. And Sue already has my book. So my next VIP job seeker office hours, I'm going to be paying it forward and gifting the book to a job seeker in there. But that's another thing that you can do when people reach out to you from a marketing perspective is give them something as a thank you uh, on there. So similarly, check your spam folders. Thank you, Sue, for mentioning that. Uh, I try to check my spam folder. I try to do it weekly, but once a month, I would say is probably more of an average. Every now and again, I'll get something that's put into spam that shouldn't be in there. And sometimes it's just a scan through. Now the form completions, I completely miss because they were buried under all the real spam stuff. So sometimes you got to search for the title of the email. Sometimes you got to just poke around in the spam folder. All right, guys, I'm going to start to wrap us up here. This is, again, is our fourth Friday of the month. This is our VIP office hours for social media managers and marketers. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Before we leave, I'm going to ask Julia if you could please drop the YouTube link inside of chat for the playback. So for those of you who maybe joined late, if you want to watch the playback, you'll be able to access that. And then we also have a playlist for every one of these in the series. We just started in August, so this is the second one that we've done for social media managers and marketers. But if you watch that playlist, you can watch this month as well as the previous month. And we'll be meeting again in a month. And let me just look up that date real quick here. Julia, if you have it, if you want to drop it into chat, let's see who's fastest. Uh, fourth Friday will be, actually, there's only four Fridays in October. So this will be Friday, October 27th. If you'd like to join us that day, that is the Friday before Halloween. So I may wear something Halloween-ish. Halloween-y, Halloween-ish. I don't know what the word would be. But Halloween-like on that Friday, if you would like to dress up, feel free. Because when we are self-employed, we do not get to go to um, employee costume parties. Anyway. So I might put a wig or something fun on that day. You never know. With that said, everyone, have a wonderful weekend. My name is Brenda Meller. I help business professionals, solopreneurs, and job seekers get a bigger slice of the LinkedIn pie. I appreciate you joining us here.